was very nice. Thanks, baby. I've been practicing. You got little caddies. Wow. <laughs> Bye. Hi. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire and I make bookish videos on the YouTube.com. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. First of all, hi. I haven't seen you in a couple months. I'm so sorry. Honestly, coming back has been kind of super duper intimidating for me and I've been trying to figure out how I want to go about it, but instead of jumping into something, I, I wanted to do... I haven't been... Well, okay. <laughs> Let's back up. I haven't really been watching a whole lot of book content, unfortunately, but I have seen some bookish people do some of those like monthly reset videos and I'm super into them. I don't know where it originated from, but I wanted to give it a go because I think what my brain needs in order to move forward making videos for this channel is I need a clean slate. I need to wipe it clean. I need to get all the things out of the way that I've been needing to get out of the way. My filming room is a mess right now. I have so many books just like there's books on the floor. I've got books uh, from my October and now November wrap up just like sitting piled here for me to talk about. I you know I've, my desk is a mess. I, I just feel very cluttered and I think a reset is exactly what I need to move forward in this space and I hope you're okay with coming along with me for this journey. There's gonna be a whole mess of things going on today. It's just a hodgepodge of a bajillion million things. So let's, I'll, I'll give you a brief of like what I'm going to be doing today. First and foremost, I'm probably going to do a quick, quick, super quick, speedy wrap up of all the books that I read in October and now November. I don't know how deep I'll get into them. I kind of just want to breeze through them. I want to get them off this table right here and I want to be able to put them away. And considering all the other things I want to do in this video, I just like, I just, it's not going to be long-winded or anything and I hope you don't mind. Um, I will most likely be talking about some if not all of these books in future videos anyway. For my peace of mind and my brain to feel less cluttered, I think I just need to get them over with. Moving on, I'm also going to probably be doing a Rapidish Fire book haul. I have had the bottom shelf of my TBR shelf over here filled to the brim with books for months because I've been trying to just wait so I can. So there's going to be a nice big book haul, completely thrifted book haul. I don't even know how many books are over there. I want to say like 50 at least and I want to be able to put those away as well because once I can do that, I'm going to feel much better, okay? I also figure I can talk to you about uh, what I've been reading lately, like what I'm currently reading. I'm going to be doing some shelf organization. I'm going to probably talk to you about uh, some new hobbies that I've picked up and or learned and or having fun with. I'm gonna be inserting like a couple videos of b-roll from things I just never posted. So these are probably from October. I want to clean out my camera. I'm just wiping the slate clean. This is what that- this- the, 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 <laughs> this is what this video is. I'm so excited to do this because I've been dreading and I shouldn't have to be dreading, but I've been dreading coming back and like having to sort out making a whole video for a wrap up, making a whole video for the book haul, an organization, and just, I kind of want to do it all. This video is going to be probably a bit long. I'm also going to be talking about some like personal life stuff and um, like how I am. Thank you for watching in advance and make sure to grab a snack, a drink, coffee, tea, whatever. I've got a honking cup of coffee here because I'm not gonna make it through the day if not. And um, let's go. Actually just kidding. I'm gonna stay sitting here for a second because lighting's fine and I want to talk about wrap-up stuff. So let's do that real quick, okay? It's gotta happen. The first thing I read in October was Sheets. This is a cute, adorable little comic about grief and friendship and ghosts about this girl whose mother died. She works at a laundromat. She's basically running the whole place herself despite being in like middle school or high school. This ghost finds 
his way to her laundromat and it's friendship and it's great it was adorable this one made me cry i also i'll just get this one out of the way now even though i read it a little bit later in the month i also read the second one which was delicates and i love this one just as much i believe i gave this one five stars and this one four and a half i loved both basically you can count on that anyways i highly recommend these these are middle grade um graphic novels i suppose and the artwork is so colorful and fun and beautiful and it has really deep conversations about grief and you know friendship and belonging and acceptance etc etc so i also read i this was like my month of graphic novels and whatnot i read the frog and toad treasury because this has three out of four of the stories i am still missing a um a bind up that has all four i'm i need it <laughs> if you don't know what frog and toad is literally a frog and a toad going on adventures talking about their friendship and just being overly adorable and wonderful and this has always been one of my favorites and i found this thrifting so i was so excited and I brought it home. Oh my god, I'm running out of breath. Told you, this is gonna be rapid fire. Wow. Um, and then I read Garlic and the Witch. I was a silly goose and I did not get back in the pond. This is apparently the second one in this graphic novel collection. Although, honestly, I kind of put the pieces together on what happened in the first one anyway whilst reading this, which is a little bit of a bummer but also i wasn't overly confused it is middle grade so it wasn't a lot to unpack from the last story i do want to pick up the first one which is garlic and the vampire because i loved the vampire's character in this story this is a super adorable tale about garlic who is a little anthrop anthropomorphic anthropomorph <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say and there's other vegetables too that all come to life in this witch's garden. It's about change and accepting change and belonging and being brave. So if you like vegetables, here you go. Next, I read Slewfoot by Brom. This was fantastic. If you don't know, it has illustrations by the author in here as well. Um, and every chapter has a header that, if I can find one, Every chapter header has its own little artwork and they're all different and it kind of usually correlates to whatever is going to happen in that chapter. The thought and overall design of this book was amazing as well as the story. I really loved this. I actually buddy read this with Vanessa from the Fairy Wilds. I will link her down below. She's wonderful. This is our second ish I think buddy read. Um, we read Percy Jackson months ago and absolutely loved it and are going to continue on at some point but for October, we both really wanted to read Slewfoot, so we decided to buddy read it together, and I'm so glad we did. We had so much fun. We had a great time with this. We both loved it. I gave it five stars. I'm not entirely sure what Vanessa gave it. This is set in colonial New England, I believe, in Connecticut, and I think it's set in, like, near Hartford, which, if you don't know, is where Rory's grandparents live in Gilmore Girls, so I was like, this it's Gilmore Girl coded, confirmed. This ancient spirit wakes up in the woods and he's got little minions. It's like a possum and a floating fish and they're like telling him he needs to remember who he is because he is this god basically. The wild folk is what they're called and they call him father. And then there is Abatha who is this girl, married this guy and they are on the brink of losing their farm and then a bunch of stuff goes down. Basically she's accused of being a witch and it all spirals from there and it is crazy. And I loved every second of it. It's kind of fairy tale esque but it also has the same vibes. What's the word I'm looking for? Atmosphere? It has the same atmosphere as the movie with Anya Taylor-Joy, The Witch. Then after that, I was like, I need something light and happy-ish. And this is In the Company of Witches by Orly Wallace. This is the first in a series, duology. This is very Gilmore Girls meets Sabrina the Teenage Witch. This is about two witches who run a New England inn and their niece, after Bryn's husband dies, uh, she moves in with her aunts to help them run this in and she's dealing with grief. Then a customer, 
what would you call it a patron dies while at the inn one of the aunts is accused of murdering her and so Bryn has to prove her aunt's innocence and it's her just like unpacking this mystery of this family and their stuff and also unpacking her grief and coming to terms with her husband's death finding her magic again because she hasn't used magic since her husband died there were a lot of moments where I was I was smiling while reading and like laughed out loud I do have the second one um, and I'm excited to read it because I feel like this is the perfect pick-me-up. It just made me feel so light and happy. I gave this five stars. Then I have Dead Poets Society. Um, okay, so I love Robin Williams. He is a gem. I loved the Dead Poets Society movie. Granted, it has been years since I watched it, but obviously mainly loved it for Robin. Literally a novelization of the movie. So the movie came first and then someone made a book version of it. It was fine. It wasn't my favorite. I think I gave this three stars because the the writing was accessible. It was very straightforward. It was basically exactly just bam, bam, bam. This happens and this happens and this happens. I feel like obviously in the movie we get a much deeper sense of the characters and who they are as people, whereas they all kind of just mash together in this. And also there was a scene of SA that made me deeply uncomfortable in this book. I don't remember it happening in the movie, but maybe it did. I'm gonna have to rewatch it at some point. But the fact that this character not only gets off with like nothing happening to them for this essay, um, but also essentially rewarded for it by getting the girl in the end, didn't, it didn't, it, it wasn't, you know. Then I picked up my most anticipated release of this year and that was Rouge by Mona Awad. If you don't know, I loved Bunny by Mona Awad when I read it. This was fun, much more Tom Cruise than I anticipated. I had a good time, but it wasn't what I expected, I think. This is about a girl who loses her mother. Both her and her mother are just absolutely obsessed with beauty. It's so creepy. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to describe it. After her mother dies, she goes to California to clean up her mom's house and whatnot and get ready to sell it. She goes to this spa where apparently her mother went. Weird stuff begins to happen and also there's flashbacks and Tom Cruise is there in a, uh, I don't, I don't want to give anything away and I feel like if I say anything else it's gonna give it away. It was there were quite a few books that I started and or didn't finish in October. I did pick up some of Edgar Allan Poe's works. We had to read these in school, so I already knew them, but it was fun diving back into them now as an adult. I read the House of Usher story because Mike Flanagan put out Fall of the House of Usher adaption, and it kind of encapsulates not only that story, but all of Edgar Allan Poe's works, or at least a ton of them. And then I read the Lottery by Shirley Jackson. I didn't finish this. I, I read that story and I think I read three other stories in that collection. I wish I could remember the names of them. I'm so sorry. But as always, I love Shirley Jackson and she's fantastic and I'm so excited to continue reading those stories. I started Hooky Volume 2. It is about witches and it's perfect for October, but I also just feel like it's an anytime sort of graphic novel. So that's fine. I will be continuing on with that. And then last thing in October was a failed buddy read with Livy and Shelby, who I will link down below. We were going to read Crescent City, the first one, and I read 200 pages of it. And then I don't know what happened. Uh, life happened. I read 200 pages of Crescent City. Eh. Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, a romance about two autistic characters falling in love and it's enemies to lovers and I loved every second of this book. It was so wonderful. If you don't know, I am suspected autism. Um, so it was really nice seeing characters that I related to heavily, deeply. I very much related to Eve. There was a couple things she said in here that made me cry, actually, which I wasn't expecting from a romance. Just the representation of autism in this book was so fantastic that I will be recommending this to anyone who wants a cute romance. It was just so adorable and funny and a great time. I loved the characters. I loved Eve and I loved Jacob. I, I, I give this five stars. It was wonderful and I want to read the other two as well. And then I had another failed buddy read. <laughs> 
and I feel so very bad about this. I reached out to Erin and I will link them down below. They are wonderful. They're a fantastic booktuber. They're relatively newish. They make such great content and we have so much in common as well as our reading tastes have a lot in common. We both had The Girl with All the Gifts by MR Carey on our TBR and I was like, do you wanna buy her this with me? Honestly, I actually don't know if Erin ever finished it. I got about 200 pages in. I think it's like a 400 page book. So I got like halfway through. I was going through it uh, during the time of reading that book. The heaviness of the themes and things going on in that book was just like, it didn't feel like an escape from the things that were going on in my life and my mental state at the time. So I told Erin, like, I was like, hey, I gotta not. <laughs> oh, oh, this will be talked about more. Moving on, I then picked up Red Rising because I heard it was like Hunger Games in space. And I just wanted something fast paced and fun and bingeable to get through. And so I picked up Red Rising. I actually listened to the audiobook because while I did have a physical copy of it, it was thrifted and it was. I have germ issues. And this book in particular was. Sticky. So I ended up listening to it while I was playing Stardew Valley a lot. The juxtaposition of those two things was interesting, but there were multiple times during that book where my jaw dropped. I had a lot of fun listening to it and just reacting and it did very much bring the nostalgia of reading The Hunger Games for the first time back in the day. Yeah, I picked up Golden Sun pretty much right after that and I've been doing the same thing. Also kind of like tandem reading, but also listening and playing Stardew, so I think that might just be the theme for those books at this point, which is fine. I'm- it's good. I feel like I'm doing two things at once, so it makes me feel productive. Finally finding a sci-fi that I enjoyed and liked and was able to follow without too many, um, brain cells lost felt great, man. Read the Tao of Pooh. I'm blanking on the dude's name. My sibling-in-law gave it to me to read. We were talking about it at one point and they happened to have it on their shelf, so they let me borrow it. I read it in one day. It was really sweet and cute and I appreciated all the little lessons. Basically this book is just teaching the art of Taoism, the practice of Taoism, through Winnie the Pooh. So it uses examples while using the characters as examples, if that makes sense, and it's like the author's having this conversation about Taoism with Pooh and Piglet and Eeyore. It was great because if you don't know, I love Winnie the Pooh. And then I also have been reading Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Elderling series and the Farseer trilogy. So uh, this is continuing on with Fitz's story. If you don't know, I read Assassin's Apprentice earlier this year, like a couple months ago, and I loved it. It made me cry multiple times. Fantastic. It's one of my new favorite fantasy books ever. So I've been really, really excited to continue on with this series and I'm so glad I am. And I'm just taking my sweet time with it because I love being in this world. I love being with Fitz. I love the characters. I think that's everything that I read in October and November. That took so much longer than I thought it would. I'm gonna have to get this down so much. And let's do some hauling, shall we? Okay. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. I had all these books plus some more, I think, um, that have just been stacked on this little table for way too long. And then down here, I just have books everywhere. All of these are thrifted and I've just been waiting to haul them in a video and now is the time. So we're gonna do that, okay? Give me a sec, I'm gonna get situated. As you can see, it's a mess here. You actually can't see because there's more. I believe you've seen this shelf once in my uh, TBR bookshelf tour video. Essentially, this is all my TBR stuff, right? And this shelf up here as well. And then right here is all the books that I have thrifted in the past, like, I don't even know, six months, what? Do you wanna say hi? <laughs> Pippin's here to join us. Essentially, everything that I have thrifted is here. <laughs> I have not put them away on my shelves. They've been here because I want to do a haul. I feel like I'm talking in circles at this point. Anyways, I'm going to go through. I'm going to show you them. I'm probably not going to spend a long time on them. Maybe a select few. But otherwise, I'm just going to be like, meh, meh. okay? Okay. I'm going to start with stuff on the floor just to get out of the way. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Sherlock Holmes by Eric Brown. 
This is the Martian Menace. I was so excited when I found this because I was like, oh, Sherlock Holmes. It's not even written by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's a different author's take on Sherlock Holmes. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. I didn't realize it until I got it home. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I have been collecting these Barnes and Noble editions in particular. Beartown by Frederick Bachman. The Latecomer by Jean Hanf Korolitz. This cover is everything to me. I also found Educated by Tara Westover, which is a nonfiction that I've been interested in, but it did not have the dusk jacket, which is fine because I honestly I thought it was kind of ugly. I found Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, Pisces by Melissa Broder, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King, and then I was so excited to find the entire trilogy, the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. It's the whole thing, guys. Ugh. Ignore all the dog hair floating around. It's it's bound to happen. But I found, anyways, so I have <laughs> Fool's Errand, Golden Fool, and Fool's Fate. I'm really excited about this because I love the fool. And then I found, <laughs> I'm, I'm sad because the sticker ripped off part of this book's cover. I found this thrifting and I was like, I gotta, I gotta have it. It's The Pirate Ghost by Laura Pender. This is like a Harlequin romance. Are you kidding me? <laughs> now we're moving on to everything here. I did a couple, like like a month ago, I organized things. So now they're in sections. So I have fantasy, I've got general fiction, and then I've got like the mass markets. I, and then I think there's like nonfiction in there somewhere. So I'm gonna start over here and we're just gonna work our way this way and I will the Fall of the House of Usher. This is such a cool cover and this is what I read The Fall of the House of Usher out of um, that I mentioned earlier but it's this really it's this really cool like I believe 80s or 70s cover. It's kind of creepy but I love him. Yeah 1960. I love this cover. It's so weird and wonderful. Everyman's Library Pocket Edition of Robert Frost, which I just thought was so cute. Even better is someone dog-eared their favorite poems, I believe. There's also like a little ribbon to mark. Eh, it's great. Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. Princess Diaries by Carrie Fisher. This beautiful copy of Walden by Henry David Thoreau. She is big, but she is beautiful. And they had a bunch of these, but these were the two in the best shape. And these were the two that I really cared about. So spines are lovely. They both have ribbons. It is the works of Oscar Wilde and then the works of Leo Tolstoy. And hey, if someone wants to educate me, why is why is Tolstoy's name written with an I here? Is that like a certain spelling? And then I have this treasury of American poetry, best love poems by American poets, gold pages, a gold bookmark, and it's in this beautiful edition. A beautiful spine. Oh my god, this is gonna fall. <laughs> Hold on. This first book I was so excited about. When I tell you I've been looking for this first book, since the beginning of time itself, dinosaurs ruled the earth, the asteroid had not even hit. Angel Fall by Susan E. I have heard such amazing things about this book, but I have not ever been able to find it anywhere. I also found a really cool cover of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. It has amazing end papers. Modern Fairy Tales, this is by Holly Black. I've never read anything by Holly Black, but this book was just way too cool to pass up. It even has like little, <laughs> are you kidding? It has little illustrations. Red Knight by Mel's Cameron. This is book one of the Trader Sun Cycle. I've never read anything by this author. I've never heard of this book, but I saw it was fantasy and then I saw Slaying Dragons is a bloody business. And it has deckled edges. The back is super cool. Then, this is a silly one, but I found The Jade War by Fonda Lee. I don't own Jade City. Is that the first one? It's in great condition, so I figure whenever I do get around to wanting to actually read this series, all I have to do is pick up Jade City. The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. I've heard mixed things about this. Ew. Sorry. <laughs> Someone dumped like all their fantasy books one day at the thrift store. This is another book I haven't heard a single thing about, but I could not. I am not usually someone who's just exclusively gonna buy a book for the cover. Like sometimes I really get the urge, but a lot of the time I use my brain cells and I'm like, I don't need this. If I don't want to read it, why am I just getting it for the cover? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, this book was a dollar. The coolest cover in the history of the world. It's called Firethorn and it's by Sarah Micklem. <laughs> Am I right, ladies? It's kind of, someone chewed on it, but that's okay because this is just, 
I don't even know. And then I found the Three Body Problem by Sixin Liu. And it's translated by Ken Liu, which I believe is the other author, oh yeah, of The Grace of Kings. This is apparently a sci-fi and I've been trying to get more into sci-fi. So I saw sci-fi and I was like, yeah, all right, fine. Elevation by Stephen King. And I've got Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. I also found a hardcover copy of Stalking Jack the Ripper. <laughs> all right, this. Oh look, I don't even know. By Robin McKinley, it's called Spindle's End. And it, it sounds like a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. I was sold. If not by that, then this cover is everything to me. Can we talk about him? Redwall by Brian Jux. I never read this as a kid, so I'm quite excited to get around to this also. Did he need to be there? I've got this really cool edition of The Golden Ball and Other Stories by Agatha Christie. I love this cover. It's so cool. <sighs> Ship of Magic and Dragon Haven uh, by Robin Hobb. I am slowly collecting all of Robin Hobb's books. Um, this book is the first in the Live Ship Traders trilogy, and then this book is volume two of the Rain Wilds Chronicles. So I'm all over the place, but when I find them, I take them. Princess Bride by William Goldman. I found E.T. This is like a novelization based on the screenplay of E.T. Dragon Song by Anne McCaffrey. I'm trying to just acquire all the dragon books ever. I also have The House of Many Ways, which is the third book in the Hell's Moving Castle universe. Stars Like Dust by Isaac um, Asimov. <sighs> okay. Look, look it, look it. <sighs> a, tree go <laughs> a Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Orlando by Virginia Woolf. And I didn't even notice until just now when it flipped open that it's annotated. I love when books are well loved. A Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. Homegoing by Yag Yassi. I'm so excited to read this as well as Transcendent Kingdom. Coffee Break. Or the Kite Rider by Khalid. Hassini, I believe I'm saying that correct. If not, I apologize. Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I found Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero, which I believe is a newer book. Circe by Madeline Miller. The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. Complete Stories by Flannery O'Connor. The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Our last stack, okay. By Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. I found this at a thrift store, like a really cute thrift bookshop, right after I finished Jane Eyre, and this is essentially the untold story of the first wife of Mr. Rochester, which I think is so cool. I feel like she deserves her own story. Stand by, I gotta change my battery. A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. Buried Giant by Kazu Ishiguro. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. I've heard mixed things about this, but... Arcadia by Lauren Groff. I'll admit this was a cover by, but I think it's about a cult. And it was a library book and it still has the little library thing in it. Idiot by Alif Batman. And then last but not least, I have Salem's Lot by Stephen King. And this was the illustrated edition. So it has like these beautiful end covers. End covers? End pages, Clara? I went one day when apparently someone got rid of their entire Stephen King collection because we grabbed a bunch for my sibling-in-law and then this was the only one I grabbed, but it had, it's illustrated, so I had to. <sighs> okay, so that's all the books I had to haul. I'm very excited to have gotten that out of the way. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to arrange this bottom shelf because this was obviously originally my two haul shelf, and now I kind of just want it to be more TBR. But also, where am I going to put my haul stuff? Am I just going to stack it? I might do that. That's a problem for future me. Honestly, I think what I might do, these two shelves down. I only have one fantasy TBR shelf and honestly that is a crime um, and against the law. So I'm going to, I think, move everything down, which is gonna be such a pain, but I'll let you watch. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, if my hair looks weird in the back, it's none of my business. So now I have to put <laughs> the books away. And this is gonna be a little bit difficult because I have a lot. Most of my shelves are full, so I'm gonna have to really <laughs> squeeze things in.
This might be a... Oh, I'm really out of breath. I think I need to go through some books because... I have to find a place for all of these. And disclaimer, there's not a place. I got everything to fit. It doesn't look the best, but it certainly works for now. At least there's a place for everything at the moment. Yay. You know, it was absolutely devastating. I got back in here because I was like, I finished the shelves. Did I? I forgot a whole stack. So now I have to go and find a place for these, but I'm probably just gonna do that after. It's not happening right this moment. I am sweating. I completely failed the buddy read, multiple buddy reads, and I've just been feeling really burnt out. On camera, I found myself masking a lot. I've kind of dodged around this topic since uh, re-creating my channel because it's something I've still been coming to terms with. It's something that I'm still unpacking and learning about and hyper fixating on. It has changed and shifted the way I think about my life and the way I think about who I am as a person and it's kind of hard to continue on pretending I'm the same person I was before figuring all this out about myself. Essentially I don't have a formal diagnosis but I have suspected autism which is considered highly valid in the autism community. So many people are not able to get formal diagnoses, diagnoses because it is just not accessible, it's expensive, uh, insurance doesn't cover it a lot of the time, there's just so many reasons why people forego getting a formal diagnosis versus self-identifying as autistic. I am slowly but surely working my way towards getting a formal diagnosis. I haven't wanted to bring it up on my channel because I don't have the doctor notice but you know I've talked to my therapist about it I've talked to my family and my friends and my significant other about it but you know talking about yourself on the internet is always scary and I think that especially with a topic like this so many people don't understand what autism really is or they see it as this one thing in this one box Whereas autism is a spectrum and you can be anywhere on the spectrum and everybody's experiences are different with autism. So I have just been really struggling with like wanting to verbalize all this. Kind of hinted at it, I talked about reading Unmasking Autism by Dr. Devin Price earlier in the year and really identifying with that really, it, it just everything, everything was hitting home when I read that book. It made me cry so many times because I felt like I was finally seeing myself. I've done so much research. I've hyper fixated on autism. I have online ass assessments and just really gone to town with making sure that I am not misinformed and I am 100% certain that I fall on the spectrum because I don't want to misdiagnose or, um, you know, spread false information or whatever if I ever do talk about it here. But I want to talk about it here because it is a huge part of my life. Self-assessment and self-identifying autistic is so valid. Uh, resources are so hard to come by, especially, I feel like in America, especially because of the healthcare system just absolutely sucks ass. Yes. All this to say, I have been struggling with intense burnout so I haven't really been it, it like it really messed with my mental health so I haven't been making videos because I've just been so burnt out and especially since I quit my piercing apprenticeship too it's just like I am finding as I'm coming to terms with being autistic so many things are clicking into place and I'm just really making sense of like oh this is why this hasn't worked out and this hasn't worked out etc etc but I've also found that like on reflection, thinking about, I'm sorry, this is all over the place, but stay with me. Hopefully this makes some kind of sense. I mask heavily on camera. I mask in my daily life as well. I have this innate sense of needing to perform and entertain and be the funny one. Make sure everybody thinks I'm worthy of something in the form of being funny and I find myself doing that on camera as well. I will mask so heavily on camera and I will be the court jester and like <laughs> expel all this energy and as soon as I finish filming I'm so just exhausted. I am a chronically fatigued human being as it is but it, it's draining 
and I think that is another reason that I burned out um, as quick as I did and I will admittedly tell you that I am still not feeling my best but I want to be more honest and unmask on camera um, I'm not sure you know what that's gonna look like and maybe it doesn't like portray this way to you guys but I feel like a lot of the time I am over the top when I am making videos I hope I'm making sense I I just really wanted to chat about this with you guys because it might change how I behave on camera. I'm really trying to unmask. Not to say that I'm not going to be cracking jokes and stuff, because that's just who I am. I hope you don't mind me being more me, because I need I need to be <laughs> for my for my own sake. And I found that like when I was masking so heavily on camera, I was afraid to talk. I was afraid to say the wrong thing. So much of my filming was just like when I was editing and going through footage, just silence, just dead silence. I would dissociate and it would just be me like, because I was so afraid to say anything, to give opinions on camera. That's another thing I'm working on. But most importantly to me, it's important for me to finally just like take the mask off, put my little jester outfit away and just be myself. Expels so much energy and time trying to be the person I thought people wanted me to be in life and also here on my channel and I'm so tired <laughs> of doing that like I just want to talk to you guys and make videos like right now I am rambling it's scary I'm <laughs> like this isn't easy but I am rambling I am just trying to get out what I'm trying to say it may not be perfect and I was so scared of not being perfect. I want- are you seeing me struggle with this? Because <laughs> let's just say is I working on getting a formal diagnosis, going to therapy, unpacking trauma, and just I'm doing my best. And it's impossible personally for me to continue on making videos and stuff when, you know, that's such a big part of my life. And it's like I can't I can't continue just like hiding it because I'm I don't know like I'm not ashamed of it but I am worried that the internet won't understand <laughs> want to get back into reading more I've really been struggling with reading or doing much of anything which is why I listened to Red Rising on audiobook it really helped get me excited about reading again not that I wasn't. It was one of those things where I really desperately wanted to read, but even the thought of having to get up and pick up a book and read with my eyeballs was so exhausting. I am just trying to exist, and even that felt exhausting. So the audiobook thing has been splendid. I've been playing Stardew, I've been allowing myself to relax, which is not my forte, and I have taken up new hobbies. I learned to knit, um, which I'm really excited about. I went out and I got so much yarn. I want to make, I want to learn how to crochet. That's my next step. But right now I am trying to hyper focus on making this scarf. It's going to be like super wide and super big. Now I am thinking I do not have enough yarn to make this scarf because the lady said it's supposed to be like 55 inches. Girl wear. Are we sure? The thing is, is that I don't have the tag for this yarn anymore either, so... <laughs> um, gonna be fun trying to track down another ball of this stuff if I don't end up having enough. Anyways, what was I saying? I learned to knit, um, again, technically. I learned... years ago, like 2013. I knit a little bit and then just dropped off and I never picked it up again until a while back. Started again to relearn because I forgot dropped off and now this is my third time reteaching myself how to knit. Originally I was going to do a blanket and then I was like that's massive you need to chill. So I decided to do a scarf. This is going to be June's Christmas present um which obviously they know about. It is very slow going but I am really happy with how it's turning out. You might be able to tell I messed up here for like six or seven rows and then I was like oh no <laughs> And then I went back to the original, so they're- I'm gonna have to replicate that on the other side. I've been wanting uh, to learn to crochet, so I got myself a little crochet needle and I want to learn how to make a patchwork blanket. I found a really cool tutorial. So I got the yarn for that, I have the crochet needle, it's just about starting, but like I said, I'm trying to finish that scarf. And besides that, I've 
Uh, have you guys heard of Myrtle? because it is so much fun. It's a mystery solving puzzle. It talks about this inspector guy who you follow throughout all of these and he's got to figure out all these murders that happen in various places and it always gives you three suspects. It has three locations, it has three weapons, and then there's the clues and evidence. It gives you like little facts about each person. You have to figure out which person connects to which location and which murder weapon and then you have to like rule it out in this puzzle format at the bottom. I have been full on Winston Bishop puzzling and I'm a big fan. I feel like I'm 80 years old because I've been knitting and puzzling. Don't you agree that sometimes when you start puzzles you get a little bit weird and I don't know intense? Spend a lot of time humming. Also spend a lot of time naked. I'm gonna do you puzzle. I am puzzling. Looks good to me. So I am going to be moving, I'm going to be having to um, get rid of a lot of things and probably unhaul a crap ton of books and I just am not looking forward to that. I am looking forward to decorating whatever new place we find though because I love decorating. I truly I do. The big thing is we have to find a place that will take all our pets. Two cats, we have Pippin and then we have two babies, two little babies, two ferrets, right? It's gonna be really hard to find a place A, big enough, and B, has enough space. We wanna move into a place that's a bit cheaper because we wanna save money because we wanna move to Europe, but we can't save money in this place. Also been going through my storage unit and uh, I found all my old diaries from when I was a kid. I'll see if I can insert a clip because June was reading them out loud when we found them. <laughs> no one did. So now I'm really bummed and and the b-ball my team lost seven to like 39. <laughs> this week pretty much stunk so yeah kk i really have to go i'm starting to cry again <laughs> why me why <laughs> is I have big attachments to everything. I assign emotional attachment to all my belongings and that is a big, big bad time for me because it means that getting rid of everything is emotionally damaging to me. Boop. <laughs> Boop. This video I am thinking is going to be horribly long and for that I am sorry. It helped wipe the slate clean. It feels a lot better. I am so happy to have figured this out. I hope you guys liked this video. I'm sorry if it was a little bit all over the place. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> the soup content. Is that you? You're beautiful. Is this your big break? I'm not sure if I'm gonna have a set TBR for December. I think it's gonna be more like what I'm feeling. I'm definitely gonna be finishing up Royal Assassin and I'm going to be finishing up Golden Sun. And then I want to read some like winter things. I have The Golden Compass, which feels like a winter book, as well as Little Women, which also feels like a winter book. But I'm also just really deeply in a fantasy mood, so hard to say. <laughs> I also want to just do more reading vlogs because I feel like I've been doing a lot of themed things and I kind of just want to share what I'm reading while I read it. Don't, <laughs> don't climb that, please. <laughs> Give me a book. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Nice to be back and I hope to see you guys again really, 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 really soon. Hey! Oh my god! <laughs> you can't go in there! What are you doing? You can't do that, bud. That's not for you. I know you want to go in my sleeve, huh? Soup really, really loves going inside sleeves and just having it like a hammock. This is like his favorite thing to do ever. He just goes in and he hangs out. He'll poke his head out. There it is. <laughs> Make sure to treat yourself and others with kindness and we will see you next time for another video. Bye.